FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. All right, everybody, this is Faux Monday, the snackable companion show to FOMO Sapiens. And of course, we will have a full episode on Thursday. But until then, happy Faux Monday, best day of the week. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and of course, FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now, this Thursday, we're going to talk about the art world. But before we get there, we need to deal with practical realities. And it is tax season. And I have here today somebody very special, my own very accountant who I've been working with since I was a student at HBS. He's the guy who does everybody's taxes at Harvard Business School, but he has a crazy backstory that makes him a perfect guest for Faux Mondays. So I want to introduce you to the great Louis Weinstein. Louis, thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Patrick. Pleasure to be here with you. All right. So first of all, I'm going to put you to work. Before we get into your story, I'm going to I'm going to give you a little uh, a, a little a little uh, task, which is we have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this show. So what are three tax tips for entrepreneurs? Well, the first tip would be, you know, after the Trump uh, tax law changes, they did away with deducting the business use of home deduction. If you're itemizing your deduction and if you're an employee. However, if you're an entrepreneur and you have like a singer mem- member LLC or um, you just file a regular Schedule C, you, st- you still can deduct the business use of home um, as long as you use the, the, the office area regularly and exclusively for business. Um, you basically take the square footage of the area you use over the total square footage of the home and then multiply that times the applicable expenses, whether it be rent or mortgage interest, utilities, et cetera, and you can take a deduction on your business return. Um, another tip would be to consider you know, contributing to an IRA. And indeed, if you are an entrepreneur and let's say you're an LLC, a single member LLC or a self-employed individual that files a Schedule C, and you file an extension, you actually have until the extension deadline of October 17th to fund either your SEP or your KEO for the 2021 tax year. The final point I would give would be to file an extension if you can't file on time. You know, an extension gives you until October 17th to file your taxes. However, remember that even if you file an extension, it only gives you a, an extension of the time to file and not to pay. If you owe money, you should estimate what you think you are going to owe and make a payment with your extension. Now, even if you can't pay the amount that you think you owe, you should still file an extension. And the reason for that is the most egregious penalty that the IRS hits taxpayers with with is the not filing on time penalty, which is four and a half percent per month with a maximum penalty of 22 and a half percent on the unpaid tax, whereby the penalty for late paying is only a half percent per month. So I think those are my quick three tips for you. FOMO. FOMO. And you guys now understand why I work with Lewis because he knows everything. I'm just so impressed. It's just so nice to have you here. So the cool thing is though, besides just being a total boss when it comes to all the stuff that you do, helping people like me, you also have started and exited three companies. And so like, I always think I I make like uh, some little jokes that, you know, accountants are very risk averse, but you are an entrepreneur. So tell us about the companies that you've started. Well, Patrick, thank you for that. Um, I think, you know, I've always had an entrepreneurial bug. You know, I'm one of six kids and my father really had a hustle to put food on the table. In addition to running a tax business, he simultaneously ran a car rental business, an air conditioner repair business. He had a gift shop. And I think at one point he even sold swimming pools. 
I really marveled at how you know hard he worked and how he was able to juggle all these multiple businesses. On top of that, my mom opened a small jewelry store in our local town to help supplement my dad's income. So I really think it was my parents that planted the entrepreneurial seed in all of their kids as five of the six kids would go on to start their own businesses. As for me, Patrick, you know, after graduating from college with an accounting degree, I worked in corporate America as an internal auditor. After about three years, I knew I was not cut out for the corporate grind, and I started contemplating starting my own business, in fact, the tax business. And then I remember one day I happened to pop into my local mailbox, et cetera, store. Today, I think they're called the UPS, store, the UPS stores. And I thought to myself, wow, what a great place to prepare tax returns. A lot of small businesses do business there. Um, I thought I could put huge three-foot banana yellow signs in the storefront windows. I could stuff that wall of mailboxes that they had with flyers promoting tax services. And then I thought that the uh, individual franchise uh, owners could make appointments for me. So in 1989, I founded my first company called Express Tax, which offered one-stop same-day computerized tax preparation, which not even H&R Block was providing at the time. Wow. We were also one of the first companies to provide electronic filing, which the IRS was piloting with a select group of tax firms across the country. We ultimately formed the joint venture with Mailbots, etc., and we had an army of tax preparers armed with laptop computers, dot matrix printers, beepers, traveling all throughout New England, preparing tax returns. At the height of the business, Express Tax was preparing returns out of 47 mailbox, et cetera, stores. And then in 1994, I had a successful exit of the business. Then in early 1995, I began hearing inklings of something called bulletin boards and then the internet. I learned that it was a great way to collect and distribute information electronically. A light bulb went off in my head, and I thought, you know, this new thing called the Internet would be a great way to collect tax information, to prepare tax returns from the comfort of one's home at a fraction of the cost you would pay a CPA. So my second company was born called TaxLogic, which was the nation's first company to provide professionally prepared tax returns over the internet. Then in the summer of 1995, I learned that AOL had just formed a venture capital arm called the Greenhouse Project to invest in companies to grow their membership base. AOL received something like 3,000 business plans. They chose 100 companies to do a deep dive on, and they selected 20 companies to come in and give a presentation. TaxLogic was one of those 20 companies. We ultimately formed a strategic partnership with AOL, whereby TaxLogic monitored monitored AOL's message boards and answered member tax questions 24-7, 365 days a year. In return for doing that, AOL allowed us to provide a link to the TaxLogic website where members could go to to have us professionally prepare their tax returns. When we started with AOL, they had something like 1 million members. Pushed five years later, AOL had over 17 17 million members, and TaxLogic was anchoring their entire tax channel. We again had an army of dedicated CPAs and IRS enrolled agents answering member tax questions around the clock, And we were the leader for online professionally prepared tax returns. In 1999, at the height of the internet boom, TaxLogic was sold. After I sold TaxLogic, you know, I thought I'd just ride off into the sunset. But once again, uh, that entrepreneurial bug bit me. Um, In 2006, social and business networking sites, you know, began taking off. You were hearing about Facebook and LinkedIn, they were becoming more and more popular. And I remember one morning I was sitting in my office and out of the blue, I get this call from a financial planner and he wanted to get together with me to network. I remember it was snowing out. I said, I really don't want to get in my car and schlep down to another 
coffee shop and have another donut. And I said to myself, there has to be a better way of business networking and building effective referral networks. So in 2006, I founded my third company, Referral Key. It was basically LinkedIn on steroids for small businesses. The site grew to 4.7 million members with over 36 million first degree connections. And then I sold that company in 2019. So I think that's a little background on the companies I started. That's amazing. And I, I knew about some of this, but I did not know about all of it. And it's just, it's incredible that you've been able to do all of these things over the years successfully, always driving towards an exit. What do you think, I mean, when you think back on all of this, like what is the thread? What is the secret to your success? Hmm. Well, picking up on your point, you know, I should mention that I founded all of these companies, Patrick, while simultaneously running a successful traditional tax business yeah. that's been in existence for 32 years that, you, that you've been a part of. You know, in each of the businesses I started, it all boiled down to knowing in my heart and my mind that I would be successful. I thought that there was nothing that could stop me as long as I worked hard and executed. And I also surrounded myself with smart, even smarter than myself, hardworking, like-minded people who believed in what I was doing. The other thing I think it took to succeed was being able to step out of my comfort zone and take some pretty big risks. You know, Prior to founding Express Tax, I was working for the Gillette Company here in Boston as an auditor, and I was on track to be a controller. I had a great salary at the time. I had just gotten married. I had just bought a new house. Um, nevertheless, I took the risk in leaving Gillette. You know, I believed in my heart that I would succeed. And one morning, I'll never forget it, I was on the expressway driving into the uh, the Boston, and I hadn't even planned it when I woke up. I walked in, went into my boss's office, and I said, I want to give my two weeks notice. And I gave my two weeks notice, and uh, I started Express Tax. With tax logic, I remember, you know, at the very first meeting with AOL, I was in Dulles, Virginia, where I gave my pitch for online tax preparation in front of 18 executives at a big round table. I was a young kid and uh, I was all by myself. And I remember one of these top executives posed a hypothetical question. He said, Lewis, what if it's April 10th and 2000 members want to have their taxes prepared? Can you handle the volume? I looked around at everyone at the table and while, without a moment's hesitation, I re replied, no problem. I hadn't even contracted with a single CPA to prepare tax returns, but I knew where I could find them, and I knew I could ha handle the volume if given the opportunity. So taking risks was a big key to my success. I'll tell you what. I love the fact, you, two things you just said that are so true. Number one is sometimes you need to play, build the plane while it's taking off. And a little bit sort of, I don't want to say fake it till you make it because you knew you could do it, but you have to stand up and say, I'm going to take a little risk. Obviously, you didn't tell people I can do 475 million on April 10th, but you, you <laughs> built, right? I mean, that, that would be crazy. So, so you did take a risk, but it was a managed risk. And the second thing is you did it as a 10% entrepreneur, which means that even if you failed, you knew that you had a business to fall back on. So that everybody is lessons for life. If you want to learn more about Lewis, you can head over to LinkedIn. He's on there. And also you can find him on Instagram at L-A-W Tax, Law Tax, where you can also see him cook. And if you want to learn more about his tax preparation company, it's generationtax.com. Very good place to check it out. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. We'll see you on Thursday. And until then, take care of yourselves. FOMO Sapiens. FOMO. Can't get enough of FOMO Sapiens? Join me on Patreon for ad-free episodes, bonus material, and exclusive content that will help you to master FOMO and position yourself for greater success in both business and life. Go to patreon.com slash FOMO Sapiens to learn more. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on LinkedIn. I love hearing from you, so don't be shy. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. 
You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.